what is free riding? I would say free riding is any kind of riding that you would do where you're just focused on learning new skills. I mean, just riding down the trail and jumping around with your friends, that's free riding. <laughs> Trying to learn tricks on jumps and seeing how skinny of a log we can keep our balance on. There's a lot of levels of free riding. I'm Jake Felt, I'm 30 years old and I've been free riding for actually probably six years. We are in Post Canyon area of Hood River County. We started building trails about four or five years ago and we got permission to do this from the forest managers. Here you got a couple different options. You got the easier way to the left. Or you could go this way, which is the fun way. At this point, it looks like a regular mountain bike trail. And then you get up here and you start to look over the edge and you change your mind. I mean, this one's just intimidating. Keep on your brakes really, really lightly and then uh, just kind of let them go and flow. I'm Gary Pash. I've been riding for pretty much all my life. My favorite part is being up in the air with nothing else on G except for a four inch log. My name's Ted Austry and I'm 15 years old. My dad started me cross country riding when I was seven, I think. And then Jake and some other guys started building up here and I started seeing it and I was like, wow, I wanna do this. My name's Jonathan Love. I don't know how I can describe it. Painful, thrilling. I never actually thought I'd be riding it because it was just like so crazy. Started doing stuff and then it just got bigger and bigger and now we're here. Free riding originated in Canada on the north shore of Vancouver Island. It's like a really wet place that they started building bridges and log rides to stay out of sensitive areas that were just always like mud boggy. I think it started from there and then it just took off. I just remember getting into it and thought I would never be riding on logs in the air. I just remember thinking it was just it seems so impossible, but it's amazing how your skills just kind of morph into what you would need. What was once dangerous becomes safe, at least in our minds. It's that big drop. It's like 25 feet, and I sat up there for 30 minutes. I just sat up there. I didn't say barely anything, and then I just did it. Didn't think about it. That was a tough one. If you stay level-headed and kind of like approach it logically, it's really not that dangerous. And if you don't ride over your head, if you just work up in little graduated increments, it's like, it's really pretty safe, but it's like as safe as you make it. Shoulder pads and arm pads and just forearm protector. You got chest protector. You got a spine protector. Protect your spine from different logs and stuff whenever you crash. Oh my God! You just gotta get used to crashing. It's not the funnest thing. The worst thing possibly could be probably to break your bike. Have to buy another bike, that's a lot of money. I mean, a couple scratches and bruises, they heal. But you definitely don't wanna break the bike. <laughs> People tend to do it together. Like, you can't really go out and do it alone, mainly because if you get hurt, it's something you definitely do with other people. It's a social thing. A lot of us do it with our dads. My dad loves it. Um, my mom, she's not against it, but she won't come up here and watch me. She says she's gonna give me bad juju <laughs> and I'll fall. It makes me happy to think these guys are this good, this young, and they have all this, you know, this kind of area up here to keep building trails to push their limits. Trail building can be really time consuming. It can take months to build a minute's worth of riding. I would say the average day is building a little bit and riding a little bit too. Some days we go out and build the whole day, but 
I'd say the majority of the time it's like half and half. We all wouldn't be as good at riders as we are if we didn't build. I mean, that's kind of how you kind of get to express what you really want to do on your bike. If it isn't around, then you have to build it. Yeah, that looks good, I think. Trim it a little bit and hit it. I think the best part about it for me is just seeing results from the energy that I put into it. It's a good means of self-expression in different ways, building and riding. The ideal trail would just have a little bit of everything, some log rides and some higher speed jumps and step ups like this, because I can jump a jump forever and not really get tired of it. Sweet. It's popping up all over the place, but places that are this far along, there aren't very many at all. When you go to Canada, families of people will be out there free riding, and the kids on a little bike, and the wife's got her pads on. I think that's kind of where things are headed here. I saw this t-shirt that me and my dad really liked, but it was something like, you don't want to end up all good and your body all nice, you know? You want to get to heaven, dust yourself off, and be like, wow, that was one hell of a ride. There's guys that are like, I don't know why you would do that, that looks crazy. You're gonna kill yourself. And I'm like, no, <laughs> this is what I love to do. 